I'm gonna have you hold up your wine glass and pretend you're at his retirement party. And if you were to give him a toast, what would you say? Here's to Bruce Bochy. Uh, Boch. Boch, raise my glass to you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please raise your glass. You know, there's a toast to Boch. Congrats on a, a Hall of Fame career. Boch, this is Doc. Uh, I raise this glass. Boch, for all of us here at San Francisco. Boch, uh, congrats on an unbelievable managerial career. I don't know how I was so lucky to spend so much time when you were here as the winningest manager in Padre history. One of the best managers in Giants history. On the World Series wins. Here's to no more rain delays. Thanks for, for guiding all of us. For being there, the person that you are for me. I'm proud to say I played for you. Proud to say I coached with you. Uh, I'm proud to call you a friend. And I've seen all those guys toasting with that rich wine. I'm toasting you with the little Kentucky moonshine, brother. And so I, what I want to do is I want to toast you with a Magnum. Salute to you, Boach, and uh, off to the sunset, brother. Have a great retirement. Here's to you. I'm going to miss you. Welcome Giants fans, we have such a treat for you today. We're getting some QT, some quality time with Bruce Bochy. Last 13 years, you've been the leader of the Orange and Black. He's absolutely beloved in the Bay Area, but he is going to hang it up. He's gonna retire at the end of this year. And so we wanted to bring you to a place we knew you would like. We're at SIF, it's a wine bar in Boston. And we're gonna take some time here to toast you. And I know it's been a long season of people saying really nice things about you, and we're just gonna, we're gonna link that out a little bit more today, okay? Okay, okay, you know, <laughs> you okay it, no, no, well, you know, all oh, this has been humbling, it really has been. Uh, I just, I, you know, I look back at what's ha happened this year, and when I announced uh, all this about stepping down, I was trying to do it quietly and no fanfare, but to have my, all my friends and family and, the fans, what they've done, and now what you're doing, it, it's, it uh, blows my mind, it does, uh, to be honest, but, uh, you know, you, I certainly don't feel like it's deserved. Uh, I mean, we've had some great times here, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been unbelievable, and, uh, I, I, and I really appreciate it, though. Let's just start at the beginning. July 19th, 1978. Do you remember day that me. day? Oh, do I remember? <laughs> David. It's one of the biggest moments of my life. I mean, as a kid, as you always, that's what you dream about. And uh, I'm trying to make the Triple A team. Right. And I don't make the Triple A team, and not only not make it, I'm going to Double A, Columbus, Georgia. I just got married in January, making $750 a month. Kim's and, uh, like, what you know, is and, uh, going on? Yeah, and I go to Double A, I'm gonna be the backup catcher. So I'm thinking, well, I can't do this. I, I gotta find something else to do. You know, I, now I got some responsibility. And, uh, so anyway, um, uh, man and Bob Clark taught me in the stain. And uh, lo and behold, July 19th, I'm called up to the major leagues from Double A from Columbus, Georgia, and uh, I got some hits and played pretty good because when they first called me up, they said, you're here for 10 days now, don't, don't unpack. Get comfy. And then, uh, you know, I ended up playing well, and I was up the rest of the year, and ended up getting over nine years as a player, but, you know, still have that baseball, the first hit, uh, uh, so that's a big day for me. So, a little bit of time with the Astros, a little bit of time with the Mets, and then San Diego is really kind of where your imprint began as a player, a coach, and a manager. And we have some people from San Diego that wanted to say some things to you, so we're going to take a look. Coach, raise my glass to you. I don't know how I was so lucky to spend so much time when you were here as the winningest manager in Padre history, showing an amazing, amazing acumen as a player, a coach, a manager, a player's manager who had great relationships and great leadership. Most people toast with a, with a glass of wine or a glass of champagne, but 
I know how you live, and so I, what I want to do is I want to toast you with a magnum, a magnum of wine that you'll probably recognize from the staff dinner in Montreal that we had in 2002. You and Kevin Towers decided to go out and buy four of these magnums, or should I say the Padres bought four of these magnums for that dinner. So I toast to you, a terrific career in San Diego, a terrific career in San Francisco, and I look forward to whatever your next journey in baseball is. My toast to Boach is oh the simple God. fact that I got a chance to learn the game of baseball in a place where not very many kids get to learn it. I got to be in a major league locker room. Wasn't a lot of kids around at that point when I was in the locker room. The fact that he allowed me to be in that locker room, I feel like a great deal of my success uh, of, of my career is due to the fact that he allowed it. And the, the, the players became my teachers. He was like the, Bruce was like the professor basically. And uh, I, learned, I learned everything I know about the game being in that clubhouse. So salute to you, Boach, and uh, off to the sunset, brother. Boach, stay in baseball. You have to. Baseball needs Bruce Bochies. And if I don't see you soon or before then, I'll see you in Cooperstown, New York, when they induct you as a manager into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Hey, Bruce, this one's for you, my man. You had such a great career. I really admired the way you played. I mean, you could play all over the place. You played in the outfield, a little bit behind the plate. You know, you played a lot of infield for the Angels and for the A's and for the Mariners. That's and it smart. was just, you know, it was a really, really good career that you had. So I, I, I toast to you, Bruce Botke. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's actually Bruce Bochy. Bruce Bochy. Bruce Bochy. <laughs> this might take a while. <laughs> Cheers to a great career. What a fabulous manager, but also a fabulous person. The only thing I can regret is your golf game, but everything else is great. <laughs> Cheers to a great career. Hey, Boach, I love you like a brother. Seriously, you're awesome. Congratulations on a Hall of Fame career. See you in Cooperstown. Yeah, good people, good memories there. Man, I tell you what, I, I look at uh, Tony Gwynn's son there, uh, Anthony, I call him, but Tony Jr., so oh my I, goodness. I, it, it was crazy. He looks like him, he yeah, talks I'm like him, and uh, I just remember you know, this young man coming up through our clubhouse. What did that mean to you with with Tony's son saying, you know, you allowed it, you you set a different culture? And it's tougher today because Major League Baseball has rules where, you know, they don't allow kids on the field like they used to. They used to turn their head, but now there's rules. But and I, I try to promote it. I tell our players, hey, bring them out early, take them out on the field. And Amy, and I'll tell you why, because this game can be really difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's a long season, you're gone a lot. And uh, and so, you know, you, you miss a lot of time, you know, with your kids and, uh, and your family. And and so this allowed, you know, the players to bring your kids in. Mine were in there too. And, uh, and you know, just spend some time there. One moment in Bruce's career that he never talk about this. This year was the first year it's really being talked about within our San Francisco media, at least when I've been around. And it's huge. Like, it's massive bragging rights that you have a walk-off home run, the only walk-off home run, against Nolan Ryan. Yeah. Why don't you talk about that more? Oh, yeah, that's something I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up. It's not it's a lot of uh, highlights, I guess, in uh, you know, my playing career. Uh, that's uh, but, a big one, but, but no, no, no question. Uh, and my dad, uh, you know, he was watching the game, and uh, I know he got emotional about it. But you know, actually, Nolan and I played together uh, in Houston, mm -hmm. and then uh, eventually I went to San Diego, and he was still there. So uh, it was the ninth inning in San Diego, and uh, and I got a fastball down and in, and then. You know, I hooked it down the line for a home run and uh, a feeling that's so hard to describe, you know, the feeling of euphoria, uh, euphoria there. And then I get to the clubhouse and, you know, back then, you know, they didn't have the big celebrations like they do now. They, the game's changed a little bit it's in, in a good way, I think. But they did have a red carpet going to my locker and there's my helmet. And I'm known for having a, you know, a little, little larger than normal size head. but. Uh, and it had a six pack of beer on ice in my helmet there for me, so. It fit in there perfectly? Yeah, I don't know about perfectly. I think they, <laughs> yeah, they stretched it a, a, a little bit, but uh, 
anyway, yeah, that's, you know, you don't forget moments like that. Oh, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's so many of them, but uh, uh, the one that probably stands out with me, they, boats love to joke around, so uh, there was a group that went golfing outside, about two hours outside of uh, uh, Cincinnati. We had a night game. It was an off day, night game the next day. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of golf, a little drinking. Uh, Boach went to sleep. We set his alarm ahead to where it was four o'clock in the afternoon, set the alarm off, woke him up. He woke up worried that he was, that he was gonna be late for the game because we were two hours away. Panicked, got dressed, got in the car and started taking off towards Cincinnati. Uh, we had to catch up with him on the road to tell him that uh, uh, you know, he wasn't gonna be late. Two things, as a player, Boach was very slow like he's the first catcher to be slow, and that he has the biggest head of all time. Whether it's an eight and a quarter, eight and a half, whatever it is, it's a really large cabeza. So I remember a couple of things. One in Atlanta, where the club stayed right across in a hotel, right across from the old county stadium in Atlanta. And uh, Boach had gone, tried to score from first to home on a double in the top of the ninth. <laughs> and it was just, you wanted to, in your mind, it was like slowing it down to m and put music on it. It was really, really bad, and he was thrown out. And so as I walk home from the ballpark to the hotel, he's sitting on the front step and kind of depressed, and I looks up at me and says, I was really motoring, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, you were really motoring. You've had a wonderful, wonderful career. Uh, I can't tell you what it means to me to be your friend and, and to be invited here tonight by you and the Giants. So knowing you and being your friend, I, I can't tell you uh, how much fun we've had on and off the field and uh, you know, continued fun uh, in your retirement. Love you, buddy. Here's a toast on your retirement, big boy. It did managing creep into your mind as a player? If so, at what point? You seem to, throughout your career, always kind of have like a backup plan, you know? Double A, I gotta figure something out. You're, 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 you have a strong work ethic and you always seem to kind of have a, a plan. Did that start to, to happen while you were playing towards the end? It did. Um, you know, 1987, 86, I signed my only multi-year contract. It was a two-year contract. It wasn't a lot of money, trust me, but at that time, it seemed like a lot. And it was a two-year deal. And, and uh, I said, well, I'll never have to work again, but California, that's not true. And I break my hand opening day in a candlestick. We're getting boat raced. And so this pitcher wanted to throw a bullpen. It was in the ninth inning. I was like, really? Yeah, just something, you know. I, something you know, clicked. Something I didn't feel right. And, and Candlestick, they had a wall there beside the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy, Ed Wojna, he was a little wild, and his, ball, his pitch hit the wall. It was He missed that much and came back and hit, hit my hand. I still have a bump yeah. there. Broke my hand opening day. So uh, I was out for uh, seven weeks. He did a pretty good job and it never really felt good. You know, you break. do, you know, you break the little yeah. bones in your hand. It takes a while. Anyway, that's when I just, you know, felt like it's time to, yeah. you know, maybe uh, get on the other side. And this, that was coaching or managing. I knew I wanted to do it. I didn't know how much I, I would like it. And so, you know, after that year, uh, Jack McKeon and Tom Romanesco uh, in the front office, uh, they talked about me being a player coach in, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I thought that'd be a great idea because I'm still playing and you know, I'll be on, a little bit on the coaching side. And, nice transition. And so, so, you know, the transition to this uh, uh, was so much easier doing that, going that route. Well, you've gone up against a lot of managers in the game and they would like to have a say at you here. Coach, this is Doc. Uh, I raised this glass of uh, God, he told you he was. Cabernet. Cabernet, it's California Cabernet to you, my friend. Boach, congratulations on a tremendous, awesome career. Uh, you know, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss uh, looking over there in that dugout and 
and watching you do your thing. My toast would be, first of all, hopefully this is a glass of good wine and good riddance, Boach. I'd like to see you run off into the sunset. You're not only my coach, uh, my manager, um, uh, competing against you, uh, more importantly, you're a lifelong friend. I know, and I can speak for all other managers and, and teams. Uh, you know, it was, it was always tough to outmaneuver you. I raise my glass to you, to a friend, a colleague, playing the game of baseball, friendship forever. I've had the pleasure to uh, learn from you up close um, on the other side of the diamond, and uh, you've done things the right way. And for me, uh, in my infancy and in managing, um, I cherry pick a lot of things from you. And uh, legacy is a very powerful word. And uh, your legacy has been carved out in over 25 years of managing Major League Baseball. Here's to maybe uh, you know another another go at a at a chairlift <laughs> for you and I. Can't wait to see that uh, new and improved revamped golf swing uh, that I know you're working on. Uh, you're a great human being, and the game will miss you, but uh, not forget you for everything you've done for baseball and for being a friend. Here's to you, Boach. You'll probably never ever really retire, but you'll retire, you know, from managing and. Have a nice life and enjoy your family. There's so many people, players, coaches, um, front office, fans, media, that just adore you and think the world of you, respect you, and how you did things the right way. Maybe we can uh, recreate, uh, you know, more of this. Uh, <laughs> thinking back to KT and Gibby and you and I a number of years ago. So, hey, Boach, congratulations. Look forward to uh, catching up with you post-baseball. All the best, my man. I love you. Um, I can't wait to uh, spend more nights with you, uh, drinking wine, uh, spending time in Jackson Hole with the Outlaws. Cheers, my friend. Love you. Yeah, you know, when I look at that, this makes this that much harder. It does. Because uh, I'm going to miss those guys competing against them, uh, their friendship, uh, uh, you know, our battles. Uh, it, this makes it harder you know and and everything that's happened this year you know with uh, you know all the great things that you know people have done for me said about me whatever and uh, you know I, I no question I'm, 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 I'm gonna miss uh, uh, a lot about it but then you know what right now I'm good with it uh, but you know looking at that it's it's made it harder this is two in a row, Boach, that somebody's ripped on your golf game. Yeah, yeah, and that's sure. that, that. I can't, I can't deny that. You know what? I used to be decent. I kind of <laughs> got out of it, and I got the bad hip, but I've had the hip replaced. So, you know, I think it's going to add a few yards on, on the drive and uh, and uh, help me get through a little bit better. But the, the golf game did suffer there. Really impressive. You know, this. Yeah. Come back with a good swing. Right. You know, it's, I've got a catcher's body. It's a little beat up. You know, and. Uh, <laughs> So I, I got some some work to do on it, but you know I'm coming back with a vengeance. I bet you they, are. They're, they're going to find out. Well, Boach, I'm I'm not at your retirement party yet, but uh, if I were, I would raise a glass and I'd thank you for all the many lessons and any opportunities to play for you. I look forward to the movie with Tom Selleck playing you. Um, he's going to do an amazing job. Um, buddy, I, I wish you nothing but the best. You've earned everything you've gotten. You're nothing but class. Take care of yourself. Bruce's leaving was kind of strange. I mean, it was one of those things where the ownership, a different ownership with the Padres, said he could have stayed. He was welcome to stay. But everybody in baseball knows if you win a division championship like Bruce did in 05 and 06, and they don't extend the one year of your contract, they're telling you basically bye-bye. When Bruce Bochy left the San Diego Padres, it was almost as if San Diego was losing their, uh, their only son um, or a uh, very integral part of the sports world here in San Diego. He affected so many people. He did charitable events. He became really good friends with the fans for many, many years as a player and then as a manager. So it was a big blow. You start to think about moving on from San Diego because you joined the Giants in 2007 difficult was that decision and what went into it? Why did you feel you needed a change? Sometimes you just know it's time. I, I talked about that earlier this year and uh, 
You know, I, we had a good team. We had just gone to the postseason. We got beat by St. Louis in the playoffs. And uh, but in my mind, you know, after a conversation I had with uh, you know the front office, uh, I had a year left on my contract, mm -hmm. and I was good to stay. I could have stayed, and uh, but you know when I heard that some clubs were asking about me, I was I was shocked because I was still under contract and uh, and, and they were fine with me listening. And I look back at, uh, you know, that off season, what happened and you know, how grateful I am to Brian who brought me up, interviewed me, convinced me, uh, you know, this, you know, this was a great fit. And uh, uh, because again, I had another year, you know, and I've, you know, I could have been comfortable there, but uh, I was ready for a new challenge. And uh, the fact that I, I felt so wanted, you know, with Peter McGowan, Larry Bear, and of course, Brian, who was behind it. Uh, I just remember going to dinner with them at Peter's house. And I just went home, uh, you know, knowing this is what I wanted to do. 25 years of managing, I'm not doing the math. That's lots and lots and lots of players who have been under your tutelage and they want to salute you. Boach, been one heck of a run. Uh, I'm proud to say I played for you. Proud to say I coached with you. Uh, I'm proud to call you a friend. For a guy with a really big head, you have an even bigger heart. Thinking back over the years, I keep going back to our shared love and passion conversations over Waylon Jennings. I think the way he lived life and his respect to those who come before him in the past, but also his words of saying, there's always one more way to do things, and that's your way. I think you've exemplified this in the, to the utmost, pal. Thanks for all the years. Uh, thanks for leading us uh, to many championships. Thanks for, for guiding all of us uh, to be better baseball players and better, better husbands and uh, better guys in the clubhouse. Hey, Boach, congratulations on a great career and retirement. When a lot of people retire from baseball, nobody gives a damn. But this game is going to have a huge void without you in it. It goes without saying. I learned a heck of a lot of things in this game from you. Some of the most impressionable times in my career, and you made me better. Uh, better at what I do now, a better player. So uh, I got to kind of start laughing about something, otherwise I might lose it on here, but you don't want that. Really appreciate you always looking out for our best interest and uh, you know making the hard decisions that it's not easy to make, and also always lifting us up whenever we were down. Thank you for being a mentor, a teacher, a friend, and a great source of entertainment at times. You've influenced a lot of folks. You've influenced the game of baseball in your own way. Thank you for everything. Here's a toast to you, bud. And if I send the wrong guy home tonight, this is why. <laughs> Enjoy retirement, pal. Cheers, buddy. Oh, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jake. You know, to just you know, to, to see them do this uh, again. It's this. You're, you're making it tough on me, Amy. It's good. It's good to reflect but, uh, on this stuff. No, I, all of them. Loretta. Uh, you know, I just I look at these guys, and I, I do. I don't want to get emotional in their comments, and uh, uh, yeah, no, that, that's pretty cool. There was a pitcher, and I can't remember his name. He was he was kind of a veteran minor league pitcher who had been called up, and I think it was his second appearance in the big leagues. And we had had some some uh, history with the team that he was facing, and I was sitting next to him. And I remember Boach coming up to him, and as as, as we all know, at times Bruce can mumble a little bit. And I think he came out and said, "Hey, you were boy. I think we need to throw high and up inside on this guy." And the guy, this rookie, was was first of all, he's very you know, scared of it. it was a second major league appearance and he didn't really understand Boach. So he went out, had a clean inning, and when he came in, Boach was like, well, why didn't you throw up and in on him? He was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize it. So I had to go to him and say, hey, just so you know, Boach will mumble at times. There are times when you won't totally understand what he, what he said. Uh, he wanted you to throw up inside. As you can imagine, this guy was mortified that he didn't carry out uh, what Boach had said, but um, there was no harm, no foul at the end of the day. My favorite Bruce Bochy story involves he and me eating sushi together. And we were enjoying some 
tuna sashimi when he mistakenly dipped his tuna sashimi into his iPhone because it looked just like soy sauce. To this day, it is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I will never, ever laugh harder than I did that night when Boach tried to dip his sashimi into his iPhone. I love that, Boach. Two thousand and seven, you called me, buddy. I was walking my dog with my wife. I was out of the game, and you said, "You got one more ride left in you." You sent me Lonesome Dub, a couple of old farmers kicking pigs around, right? You said, "I need you." I left everything to come up here. My wife looked at me and goes, "You're going again?" I go, "Boach says they're trying to win up here." You're the only manager I worked for fifteen years. You took me to five World Series. We went two as a player. We won three. You took me to three All-Star games. I never would have gone to those places without you. I can't thank you enough. You're a Hall of Famer. You're a legend. You're my friend. I love you. And I've seen all those guys toasting with that rich wine, the rich man's wine. I'm toasting you with a little Kentucky moonshine, brother. I love you. Here's to you, buddy. Let's go on a happy flight and catch some fish. Whoa. Well, the first thing that Bruce Bochy had to do was, was figure out how he was going to manage Barry Bonds because, uh, you know, this was Bonds' uh, last year, Bruce Bochy's first year, Bonds' last year. It's a tough thing to to do as a manager because oftentimes you'll have one set of rules for the superstar and you have another set of rules for everybody else in that clubhouse. But he did not do that. And uh, I thought that the respect that he he got because of the way that he handled the clubhouse under, uh, I won't say difficult situations, but uh, interesting situations, uh, really gave him his credibility in the eyes of his players. You've managed a lot of big personalities, but I don't know, I don't, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if you've managed a bigger player than Barry Bonds, at least in the Bay Area. What intrigued you about managing him? What concerned you about managing him? Because it was your first year with yeah. the Giants. Well, I'll be honest, when I first came up in San Francisco, it, you know, the when you open up spring training, you're dressed in a club. Now, I remember looking at Barry, and I said, this is kind of strange that for years we're trying to get this guy out, we're trying to beat them. And, uh, and so uh, I, I think of that memory when I first saw uh, in that clubhouse when I, I dressed in that club. But, uh, you know, obviously uh, my respect for who is the best hitter in the game. The most impactful hitter. I don't know if we'll ever see one like that again in our era. Of course, I, you know, I'll be honest. There were some things I heard about, uh, you know, the entourage and things that, you know, he, he was a little bit separate from the club. And my hope was to try to get him more involved and, and take advantage of a man that sees the game in a different way. He, he's incredible. He, really does. he yeah, does. He, really he does. Uh, you know, I still remember. You know, a lot of guys are down in the cage hitting, for example. Uh, before the game, you're getting ready for the game. Well, he would sit up on the seat there and just watch opposing pitcher. That was his way. Just little things Steady. like that. Mm -hmm. This man is, uh, he, he was that good and that, but also that different because he just saw the game sure. uh, in a different way. I learned from him. I did, you know, and, and you know, we, you never arrive in this game. You're always trying to get better and you can do it from other coaches or players. You know, I learned from him. How excited were you with Kane and Tim and here comes not not to dismiss Barry but you have you're, you're on a new path with young guys and you know you can go somewhere what we wanted to do is change you know the brand of ball a little bit the culture uh, and through collaboration and, uh, and, and getting uh, younger through great drafts uh, you know it that's where it started with Brian, uh, with the, the Linson comes and the, the Sandoval's and the you know, Bumgarners and Posey's and 
Crawfords and Belts and Bannock, you know, that was our goal is to get more geared toward pitching and defense. Uh, we felt that was the way to go in our park, that's the way to go in our division, and you know, if we're gonna uh, win on a consistent basis. You built a dynasty, uh, you know, with those players, but you also did it with a great group of coaches. And you still have some of those coaches with you, and we're gonna take a look at what they'd like to say to you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please raise your glass. Uh, Boach, you can raise your helmet, because that thing's full of wine. You're gonna be drunk tonight. That big old bucket head. Boats here's to you to a great career, and hopefully you enjoy your off seasons and lots of off seasons. Boach, great career, longevity, and success that not many managers have ever had. Um, and the longevity is even more impressive to manage this many years in the big leagues. Now is your time to relax. Do the things you have not been able to do because of the sacrifices of this game. Enjoy your family and uh, remember those world championships. Have a great retirement. Here's to you. Uh, 25 years as a manager in the major leagues, you know, that's a lot of people want to do that. Um, you know, most likely, uh, I say for sure, a Hall of Fame in the future to come. And, um, you know, we'll be uh, uh, reminiscent every time you come around and um, think about the three championships we won together. Enjoy. Well, you know, I look at uh, you know the attention I've gotten, and, and again, it's, it's so humbling. And but you know, it doesn't happen without these guys. And you know, we don't win three championships without these guys, these coaches. Uh, they're the best. I think my favorite memory of Boach is all the way back to 2010. We're in Texas and uh, the excitement of being one out away from the World Series and uh, looking over at the dugout and seeing him along with the rest of the guys standing there on the rail and just the anticipation of what may happen and then uh, getting that last out and seeing the, the sheer joy come out of a, a guy that had been in the game as long as he has and finally getting to experience that championship was, was really special. Giants fans, this party is just getting started. 2010, spring training. Any idea you could go all the way? Uh, actually, yes. I, I'm not going to say I called it whatever, but I look at 2009. 2009, we were pretty yeah. good. And that winter, I was excited. I was really excited that, you know what, this is a different team now. It's a young team. It's gotten some experience. Uh, uh, and so uh, I felt pretty good. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I knew we would win the World Series, sure. but I felt like this team had a chance to get to the postseason. You guys go all the way down to the final game of the season. Did you just kind of have this mindset, Bruce, that we're going to get it done, but we're going to do it the hard way? I didn't have that mindset. <laughs> they had that mindset. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I like things a little easier. I mean, I feel like your hair was kind of darker. At yeah, the of the yeah. I mean, look at the gray hair. You know, a couple <laughs> stents, ablations. Uh, I can think. A few heart uh, issues. Yeah, it's fine. I can thank all of them for uh, that. I guess uh, starting in 2010, that ended up being our way. Yeah. But you know what? It made us tougher, stronger, better, uh, more resilient. I look back, and they're all special. But that one, I mean, that was the first one. First one for me, for the city of San Francisco, for the, you know, these guys. And that's what you think about. Uh, you know, this was their their time, and uh, and that's what I'm going to enjoy when it's over. I'm going to go back, and I'll go through the games. I haven't done it. You know, I've always told them we, you know, you can't yeah. live on yesterday's headlines, whatever. You I will when do you it. Retire. When yes. you retire, you're allowed to do it. So I'm going to go do it, that's and uh, I'll probably second guess myself many times <laughs> okay. in a lot of these games. But at least uh, you know the outcomes. Yeah. Though. I have a confession to make because I know there's this famous story that, you know, they needed to win this one game and came down to the final game of the season, and you told the team, "Don't pack, because we're going to win. Like, don't give yourself any out here." I, I packed. I packed a suitcase. No, you did. I did. 
because I'm That's a not fine. gonna. Yeah. I had a suitcase. I was very glad I didn't have to use it. Yeah. There's no way I was. No, there is a thousand dollar fine for. Girls. Yeah, it's we a thousand dollar fine for anybody to pack. I didn't tell you. Five thousand. Well, let's look at what I make, and we'll we'll make it compatible. Yeah. So through it all, through all this time that you've been with San Francisco, the broadcast team has been the same, and it's been an absolute honor to cover you, and our broadcasters had a few things to say to you. A toast to Boach. All right, uh, Mr. Bochy, here's to you for all those times where I hit the wrong button on the Bruce Bochy show and had to come back to your office and re-record. Not a lot of managers would have done that. For all of us here at San Francisco, and I speak for our broadcast team, our team the Giants, and all of the fans, and all of us who have been the benefactors to your incredible Hall of Fame career. Thank you. For those times that you let me bring my golf clubs on the road when nobody else was allowed to, I appreciate that too. Here's to no more rain delays, no more games in Denver, and uh, here's to cocktails at five o'clock every day. You were a great manager, you were a great teacher, and you celebrated as good as anybody I ever, ever was around. Thanks for all of the help, and thanks for all of the knowledge uh, allowing me to pick your brain because uh, I learned so much about the game from you. We're going to miss you. For all the wins you helped engineer, those World Series rings that I have at home that I like to wear around town, here's to you for that. And most importantly, just for being the absolute best to all of us Giants broadcasters, to everybody a part of this Giants family. October of 2006, we brought you to the Giants and none of us had any idea how much you would impact all of us and we will be forever grateful for that. And here's to you, you old goat. And may all your favorite bands stay together. I'm gonna miss you. You, know, you look at uh, you know all the all the good that you know has happened uh, coming up here, and that's that's one of the best. My time I've spent with them, they're they're the best. In the times that they've helped me out on the road, they come out of the clubhouse, those tough losses, and uh, uh, you know to have them, you know, just to pick me up during those tough times. Kipe had a he had a knack. Uh, you know, after we won some championships and, you know, we're trying to get back there and we, we'd have a bad game or be in a bad streak and I'd be in the front seat, you know, where he sat in the seat behind me and he, he flopped his wrist over that ring looking at me. He goes, don't forget this. And uh, so just little things like that. I love these guys and uh, they were, they were good to me. And, and they had, and the funny thing is they all, they all have their own little way. If they don't totally agree with me on the lineup, whatever. <laughs> You know, getting I, it in there, mentioning it to you. Yeah, no, I, I was talking about it the other day, but uh, here, here was crew like Dickerson when he was really hot, you know. And one day I sat him, and he come in my office. Is Dickerson hurt? I know. And he walk out kind of uh, mad at me. I go, oh, you know, yeah, no, I, I tell he Kai he's about got it. an attitude, and <laughs> no question, they they will be missed. Well, boats to you, many years of happiness, 25 years. What a grind, what a pro. It was a pleasure to play for you and an honor to be uh, put on that same uniform and hoist three trophies with you and, and blessed, uh, have a blessed future and, and thanks for the memories, for sure. Boats, Bogey here. Hey, I just want to say congratulations on, a, on an unbelievable career and everything that you accomplished on the field. I'm just so blessed and grateful that I was able to be a part of, of some of the, the moments, the bigger moments in your career, but just small pieces of your career. So here's the U-Boats, Hall of Fame manager, Hall of Fame person. Good luck in uh, your next endeavors. The one thing that Bochi always brought into that clubhouse that I thought was the, big, the biggest advantage you could possibly have for a team was to be calm. If you walked into the Giants clubhouses, no matter how big the game was and how many win or go home games that they play. In 2012, there was a bunch. He held them together in the five game series with Cincinnati. It's one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen. You can point your finger at a lot of the heroes uh, in those series, but the one common denominator is the guy that was managing those teams. 2012 and 2014, I'm not gonna 
who ask you to go over the entire seasons. I just want to know how they were different for you from 10. I know 10, you've said it's the most special just because it was the first and that makes a lot of sense. But you won in 12 and 14, very different ways. 12 still blows me away. And really, you should make this team one of the greatest postseason teams of all time. I mean, you look at the times we face elimination, uh, but the Barry Zito game, that probably stands out with me more than anything. Down three to one in St. Louis, in St. Louis. Bases loaded, I think, the first inning, and nobody out. I got the bullpen, dumb, got double barrel going down there, and uh, next thing you know, he's, you know, he's like the seventh or eighth inning. Uh, shut him out, we won, and the momentum had just changed. But, you know, what, what we did, did that year, you know, it, it still, it's mind boggling, you know, it just, that those things don't happen, especially on the road, Evan, how we had to do it. 14, uh, you know, what Baumgartner did, I don't know uh, if, if we'll ever see that again. I mean, it, but, you know, game seven, you know, I see it, I see every pitch still. I mean, I see every, every play. And, uh, and so, again, I look forward to going back and watching these. Uh, oh, I bet. And, uh, because, yeah, you know, even it, we had won two championships with fans, you know, they love it, but they still have their opinion. Sure. So they were upset. I was getting letters. I don't know if I ever said this, but I was getting, I got letters and somehow they got to my voicemail, a couple of people. I don't know how, how they knew the code, but, but they were upset because Bumgarner didn't pitch game four. Right. And uh, I pitched him game five and so we felt this was, at least I did, felt this is the best way we could win a World Series. And, but our, you know, Bumgarner's picture should be on the ring, I know that. What's your key, what would you pass on advice-wise to people? You are always second-guessed, always. Yeah. Even through all your success. How do, you, how do you navigate through that? Bobby Cox told me my first game I managed, uh, I did learn a lesson though, uh, along this line. In 95, uh, my first game, uh, we're playing Houston, uh, we got boat raced and uh, I made a mistake, uh, you know, turned on the sports talk radio show and they had a call-in show and everybody was wanting my head, you know, they, they want me fired after one game. And, I went, whoa, this is a tough business. And, uh, but Bobby Cox, uh, I asked him, you know, I was just at, you know, talking to him about things. And uh, he said, that if there's any advice I can give you is do not listen to sports talk radio shows or read the papers too much. Because he said, one, I mean, we all have to have thick skin. It is, it's gonna go with the territory, but don't let it influence sure. you. Okay, so with that, well, well, we're gonna see what the guys think about about you because we've got some current players that had oh, a few things to say to you. Current players, so drink up. You know, it's a toast to Boach. Congrats on a, a Hall of Fame career. Uh, I hope you enjoy your retirement and you can finally relax a little bit. You can go on and on about your accomplishments. You've been so much to us. You've made such a big impact on our lives as <laughs> ball players, as coaches, more so as people. Thank you for everything. Uh, I hope you enjoy your retirement with your family. And, uh, Thank you for the greatest memory that I have in my career, my three World Series. Being around for a while now, I know how passionate you are about the game and uh, really most importantly about winning and how you've never, uh, never been satisfied with what we've accomplished. Thank you for everything you've done for, for me, for the Giants organization, um, and for baseball. Uh, I hope you have a, a great retirement and a lot of fun and relaxing time. Thank you for being there when I, when I need it. Uh, for be there, the person that you are for me. Thank you. Uh, we're still pushing hard, and uh, that's a big credit to you. So congratulations again, and wish you all the best. I'm not much of a toaster uh, or a wine drinker, for that matter. So I'm just going to keep it simple. And here's to you, Boach. Again, well, I, I love these guys, you. and you know they're talking. You know, the things I've accomplished. It's what they've done. It's not what I've done. I mean, I happen to be the manager, but I mean. Look at what these guys have done. What would you like to say to the people you've come across in your career, baseball-wise, and this is a moment for you to say something to the fans, because they're kind of your 26 fans. Yeah, um, you know, a lot, you know, has been said about what, you know, I've done or what I've accomplished. 
you don't accomplish anything significant without the help of others. You just don't. And this is really about everybody. It's I, I know I'm. You know, I'm getting you know some really nice things said, but they're all a part of it. Everybody's a part of it. You're a part of it. I mean, this is a family, and uh, you know, I just happen to be the manager. Just a thank you, thank you to every one of them, uh, and as much you know as what we've done on the field, but the uh, relationships, and that's what I'll, I'll miss. Those uh, great uh, times I've had with everybody. Yeah. Well, there's one last toast. Toast. And it's from me. Well, you gotta hurry because I'm, I'm getting I've emotional. I've had a few, I know. So I can't cheers yet. I'm gonna try and keep it together. Uh, I am so honored to be able to do this toast to you as the last one today. Um, I think uh, Boach would tell you when I first came up in 2008, I was slightly green. I did not know what I was doing at all. Um, I probably asked some questions you <laughs> could have said. <laughs> The hell are you talking about? I know I had moments, but through all of it, uh, you never made me feel like I didn't belong. So I just want to thank you for helping me with my career. It is an absolute pleasure to work with you. I don't know who's going to take over. Whomever it is, they have very big shoes to fill, literally. <laughs> and figuratively, but Boach, nobody's gonna fill the void in my heart. You're a wonderful man. It's an honor to know you. Thank you, Amy. I almost made it. Yeah, you got me now. <laughs> Thank you. You're the best. NBC, all of us, the Giants, we love you. We're gonna miss you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. That's a good number of people behind the Giants' dugout. Center field. And Pilar. Puts it away. 2,000 for that man. It's the number that we've been watching closely for about the last month. It's sinking in. You can see the emotion on his face. He's trying to have a good poker face, but that is a big number. You see how thankful he is. He'll be the first to tell you he did not do this on his own. But boy, did he have a lot to do with it. 2,000 managerial wins for you. You've been so modest, Bruce, about that number. But can you share what it means to you? It's a ton of success. Well, I'll start with, you know, all of them here. I mean, it, it means a lot for them to be here and doing what they're doing. I mean, it's it's really overwhelmed me at times. And, uh, and what the number means, I. I'll say this, I mean, one, it's obvious I've been fortunate I've had so much support from everybody, but it's a number that represents so many people. I mean, this is this is the players, it's your part of it, the uh, front office, uh, you know, it just, it's all of us, the coaching staff, the training staff, and it's a, nu it's a number associated with me, but it's, it should be with everybody. I mean, this, again, it just blows me away, and, uh, so pretty special here and uh, you know, it's a moment I'll, I'll never forget.